The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines paraplegia as the partial or complete paralysis of the lower half of the body with involvement in both legs that's usually due to injury or disease of the spinal cord in the thoracic or lumbar region. It describes paralysis as the complete or partial loss of function, especially when involving the motion or sensation in a part of the body. The reason for the second more generic description is that paralysis can affect many different areas of the body, where paraplegia is somewhat more limited in extent. Paraplegia typically affects the T1 through L5 regions of the spinal cord, which run vertically from the bottom of the cervical spinal cord at the base of the neck down to the top of the sacral nerves by the pelvis. When paraplegia occurs, communication between the brain and areas of the body below the injury site on the spinal cord may be limited or eliminated. Injury levels result in different motor function losses. For instance, a T4 through T12 paraplegic case may have less hand dexterity problems than a person with a T1 injury. Causes of paraplegia are often similar to causes of quadriplegia. They include automobile accidents, falls, acts of violence, sports and recreational activities. They may also include autoimmune disorders, genetic disorders, Guillain-Barre syndrome, brain injuries, stroke or oxygen deprivation, tumor growths, or muscular sclerosis or muscular dystrophy. Symptoms of paraplegia include changes in sexual function or libido, loss of impediment of the bladder or bowel function, phantom pains or sensations, secondary infections and bed sores, chronic pain. When someone suffers a traumatic spinal cord injury that results in paraplegia, the muscles in their back, core, chest, and in some cases legs may no longer function or be impeded. Because paralysis may affect the muscles of the chest, diaphragm, and abdomen, respiratory function may be affected. When the breathing muscles that help the lungs expand and contract are partially impeded, that can result in some difficulty inhaling or exhaling deeply. Paraplegia treatment. As with any spinal cord injury, early intervention and intensive treatments frequently result in the best chances of recovery. However, it is important to note that every paraplegic patient is different, and the type and level of treatment they require may be equally beneficial for another with, spinal, with a similar spinal cord injury. Generally speaking, intensive treatment and therapy gives you the best chance at recovery, particularly when you begin receiving treatment immediately after the injury. Some treatment options for paraplegia include surgery, medications, physical therapy, exercise, physiotherapy, education, occupational training, and alternative modalities such as acupuncture, massage, or other holistic treatments. Recovery from paraplegia can be a long and difficult process as paraplegics learn to cope with their symptoms. There are numerous steps to recovering from paraplegia, steps that may change depending on the cause and severity of the condition. Recovery may look different for a complete paraplegic than an incomplete paraplegic. While incomplete means that some sensations may be felt, that person can be a functional paraplegic, a complete paraplegic has no function in their legs. Some steps to paraplegia recovery include immediate medical attention. Timely care following a major traumatic brain injury or spinal cord injury can have an enormous impact on the severity of symptoms or even the likelihood of survival. Research your paraplegia recovery options. From surgical treatments, rehabilitation therapy, to dietary changes, it's important to investigate all of your potential avenues to recovery. Get involved with spinal cord injury support groups. There are numerous support groups for paraplegics and others who live with some form of paralysis, and their loved ones too. Many of these support groups can provide a place to find good advice and support. In fact, we have an entire video in our series dedicated to the importance of support groups. Make accommodations for mobility limitations. Part of recovering from any condition that limits mobility is making modifications to the home that increase accessibility. Consider psychological therapy. For paraplegics, it can be crucial to seek out a specialist in this therapy, especially when the paraplegia is caused by a traumatic injury. As noted earlier, some or all of these steps may change depending on your injury. However, for any type of recovery plan, 
it's important to consult with qualified physicians before starting any treatment regimen. For additional information, please continue reading SpinalCord.com.